Hello guys and welcome back to the rising tide. Now in this video, I will be showing you how to use the React Native Async Storage Library to persistently store user information within your application. Now this package is very crucial because no matter what application you are building, you always uh, find the need to save the user information into your application. For instance, saving the user's preferences such as uh, the user theme or imagine a situation where the user logs into your application and um, you don't you want to eliminate the need for the user logging in each time the user closes the application or they restart their device now you want to minimize this by saving the user's information within the application using this library now in this video, I will be showing you how to use the async storage library to store the, user the user's data and user's preferences within your application. So if that is interesting to you, let's get started now. Alright, so here I have a simple form we designed in our previous video. I'm going to leave a card on uh, the tutorial how we build this uh, UI form. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install the we need to install the async storage library so we'll create a new terminal and in here you're going to run the command npx expo install sorry and you're going to give it the name of this package which is react native async async storage now if you are using a uh, bare react native project you're going to use the command yarn instead of npm so you say yarn add and the, the package so I'm, I'm using npm for this i'm just going to replace this with the npx install so npx i already have the library installed so i'm just going to close this and I'll go back to our project and in here we are going to go to the login component which is uh, where we designed this is view so here we have this uh, button this uh, sign in button where when the user clicks on it uh, this uh, ripple this ripple button and when the user clicks on it it runs this uh, login function so if you check the login function up here it's just an empty function that just says where you, where you are going to put the functionality for sending the request to the server we'll create a function called store data we'll create the function down here so we'll say cons store data this is going to be an async function since uh, the, there's an async library so you want the function to be async and in here you're saying we'll, we'll wrap this in a try catch block so say try this and catch It will just say if there's an error it's just going to warn the error and up here we will now say all we need to do is we say await the response from async storage so we we'll say async storage is going to import it from uh, the react native async storage library we we'll say async storage and here we want to do we want to set the item to so the async storage set item We'll give it the key which is what we want the data to be saved as that is the name so we'll just call it the user and yeah the value is always going to be a string that is even if you have a json data or anything you need to save it as a string so here we're just going to give it a static value say i'll just give it my name so it is a key I'm just going to pass my name as a value and so 
sorry this is a comma and that is it so once you click on the button it's, it's going to run this function as going to save my name here so to test this i'm just going to come there uh, say after it has saved the data or create a dot then function that will run after this so i'll just call get data Now this function returns undefined so you cannot log it but you can only try to get the data to see if it has been saved that is why we are doing this so we'll say get data we'll say cons get data this is also going to be an async function and in here you you will say we'll also wrap this in a try catch block so it will be try try to do that and if there are any exceptions you catch the exceptions we're just going to say console.1 here and up here we're just going to get the data so we're saying cons the value is equal to async storage dot get item and we're just going to give it the the key we want to get so i want to get the user data so i'm just going to say uh, get the data and down here we'll check if the data is available so we say if the value is not null If value is not now we will say we should log the value I'm going to save that and to test it we'll come we'll open our console so let me minimize this we'll open our console and let's click on the button as you can see when, when you click on the button it's trying to get the data from the async storage this is the get function that is trying to get the data so we're going to come back here okay so this needs this, this needs to be an await so we're going to await the response and then we'll log it let's test that again when you click on the button is it uh, getting the value that after it has been saved now to apply this we'll come here to our function so for instance say we want to save we want to store the, the data that is the username and the password we can create an object such as this we say data is equal to the username and the password this uh, object and down here we want to set the, set the item we can just come down here and say cons uh, json data we we'll set it to be json.stringify so we'll see and I will pass in the data is this data here and in here instead of saying the user is a static name we are just going to get uh, the json data like I said this is because uh, this async function only saves strings so if you have an object you have to convert it to, to a string for instance this json you have to stringify it so if you come here now and we enter a username say king we enter a username like so and then we enter a password as well i'm just going to say one two three four and uh, let's come back to the console so you can see it uh try to click on the button as you can see that save the data so you have a user with the username and the password so that is how you save it so that is how you apply it so if you have 
for instance this kind of form and you want to see the data inside of the application that's how you do it now you can come now to your application for instance once your app uh, reloads you can see once the app starts you can just so say use effect and you create it from use effect snippet and in here we'll just call the functions maybe we we'll say fetch uh, user data and in here we'll just say once fetch user data I'm just going to copy this function from here because it is uh, the same, the same function. So same. I'm paste it in here. I'll save it. And if we come back here to check the logs, uh async storage is not imported and this has to be an async function so the okay, async storage is, is imported and the function is async so we save that and now you can see our application loads normally so let me come here and now remove this uh, get data so that was only created for testing so delete this function You come back to our app component and reload it. After reloading our app, as you can see, the data is still available in, our, in the app. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to minimize this terminal and uh, clear the app data coming to here and removing the app from the cache now we're going to restart the application and check back into the console As you can see the data is still being saved, saved in the console so even if you restart the application or the device and you come back this data will still be available so you can use this um, package to save for instance save the user theme save the password for your social media account so when the user closes the social media will restart the device they will not come back and have to log in each time so that is how you use the async library i am going to leave a link to a blog post that explains this process in a more detailed manner so um do check it out if you want to learn more about it and uh, comment comment down below if you have any issues uh, setting it up and i will do well to reply to all comments Thank you very much for watching to the end and I'll see you next week. Bye.